Hello everyone and welcome back to everything you need to know as a board member or economist in a central bank with a state-of-the-art FPAS Mark II framework. I'm Anna Hitjeloyan, a level 1 student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the Central Bank of Armenia. Today, we're fortunate to be joined by Narek Kazarian, one of our board members here at the bank, who is taking time from his schedule to help us understand how to meet the highest standards in board presentations and analysis. Thank you so much, Narek, for sharing these insights with us. As a student, I'm curious. When preparing weekly presentations for the board, what are the most critical things we should focus on, particularly in light of FPAS Mark II? Thank you, Anahit. I'm glad to be here. That's a great question, and understanding this is fundamental for anyone working in a central bank with a dynamic framework like FPAS Mark II. In our framework, the purpose of these weekly presentations isn't about following a fixed path or trajectory. Instead, it's about assessing whether the latest data align with or challenge the case A and case B type scenarios we've been working with. This approach is essential because rather than predicting an outcome, we're analyzing how well new information fits with our various cases and asking, are these data consistent with the narratives we've developed? This may mean refining an existing scenario or even identifying the need for a new one. Additionally, it's crucial to consider case X and Y type scenarios, tail risk cases that, although unlikely, represent significant risks. These scenarios become important when there's heightened uncertainty or in times of crisis. It's about proactively managing risks by keeping the board aware of both probable and extreme possibilities. Thank you, Narek. That's incredibly helpful. So, in terms of how we conduct our analysis, how do we ensure we're meeting the standards of the Global Forecasting School, especially when aiming for that high level of rigor and adaptability? Excellent question. Working with Douglas Laxton at the IMF taught me that high standards require a deep understanding of context, not just applying the right tools. At GFS, we emphasize a scenario-based approach. We consider multiple possible outcomes rather than focusing on a single forecast. This keeps our analysis flexible and responsive to new information, aligning perfectly with FPAS Mark II. Here are some key points to ensure your analysis meets GFS standards. One, prioritize clarity and structure. Your presentation should have a clear outline of key points, making it easy for the board to follow. We want to move from data to insights in a way that's straightforward and purposeful. Two, engage with depth, but stay focused. While it's essential to understand the data in depth, focus on insights that matter most. Think of it as diving into levels. You decide how deep to go based on what's relevant for understanding our core scenarios and potential risk shifts. Three, highlight risks and scenarios. This means not just presenting data, but connecting it to our case A, case B, and possible case X and Y scenarios. It prepares the board for a range of outcomes, ensuring they have a comprehensive view of emerging risks. That makes a lot of sense. Synthesizing and communicating complex information clearly sounds essential. Angela Papikian, our first level one GFS student, seems to be a great example of this. Can you share more about how this skill plays into successful presentations? Absolutely, Anahit. Angela's ability to synthesize information and communicate it clearly is a model for all GFS students. It's a critical skill as the best economists can take in complex data, understand the broader implications and communicate their insights concisely. My advice to GFS students is to cultivate that ability. Analyze quickly and convey the implications clearly. Thank you, Narek, for taking the time to share these insights with us today. And to our listeners, if you're interested in building these skills, Remember that the Better Policy Project offers two annual scholarships for the GFS program covering the program fee. Applications are reviewed monthly with a rigorous interview and testing process to ensure candidates are suited to our dynamic learning environment. Thank you again, Narek. Your insights are invaluable for all of us looking to develop as economists. Thank you, Anahit. It's been a pleasure, and I'm excited to see how the next generation of GFS students rises to meet these standards. And to our listeners, if you'd like to support the Better Policy Project and the Global Forecasting School's mission to improve economic and financial literacy, please subscribe to this podcast. Join us next time as we explore even more foundational concepts for central bankers and economists. 
Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.